And that's one that's put together by DATCAP. That's the Department of Agriculture, Trade, and Consumer Protection here in Wisconsin, DATCAP. And that focuses on satellite populations that are out ahead of that advancing front of gypsy moth. So far on the western side of the state, they treat gypsy moth over in that area. That program will continue to try and slow down the movement of gypsy moth. The other issue, uh, the other insect that we have that has prompted a quarantine that you've probably heard of as well is emerald ash borer. Would you hold that one? Thank you. Um, again, I don't need you to see to see the super tiny green spots. I do have some additional maps up here that you guys can grab as the day goes on. But one thing that happened this year is that in March, the, the emerald ash borer quarantine went from a county by county quarantine to a statewide quarantine. So the entire state is quarantined and wood products can move around the state from county to county now. Um, the green areas on the map, which are hard to see, I, admittedly, um, the green areas on the map are the areas where we know emerald ash borer is actually present. Those are townships and municipalities. So if you get a chance, look at one of these maps, and if there's a spot on that map where you know emerald ash borer is present, but we don't have a green spot there, please let us know. Um, we will keep that map updated so that forest managers and landowners like you can use that map to make the best management choices for their woodlot. And the last thing I just want to mention real quick is a reminder that um, oak wilt, which is a disease that kills oaks, is not common up in the northern third of Wisconsin. So it is not common right here in Langley County. We did find it in a couple more places in Langley County though, um, in Langley Township as well as Neva Township this year. Um, so oak wilt is not common. Um, you can move oak wilt on firewood. So if you have trees that die in the south, perhaps from firewood, don't haul the wood up here because you could be bringing oak wilt um, up with you. So just be aware of that. And I will wrap it up with that. Thank you. Uh, good morning. I guess uh, my name is Eric Rantala. I am the Langley County Forest Administrator. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Kretz Lumber for having me out here today to uh, talk about something I'm, I'm really interested in and concerned about on the county forest, uh, that being invasive species. Um, for those of you that don't know, um, Langley County owns and manages 130,000 acres of county forest. Uh, that is the first, we were the first county forest in the state of Wisconsin and that was established in 1929. Uh, we are the seventh largest in the state. So pretty big uh, land holding, a big responsibility, um, and, a, and, a, and a wonderful thing we cannot, uh, uh, we can offer the citizens and, and, and tourists of Tulane Lane County. So um, these lands were acquired by tax delinquency. So over the years, as tax delinquent lands came, came back to the, to the county, the county had the foresight to uh, enroll these lands in the county forest and with the intent of managing them for timber sale revenue and recreational opportunities. So in short, the uh, mission of the county forest is to manage, conserve, and protect natural resources on a sustainable basis for future, for present and future generations. Um, so that's why this invasive species issue is so important to, to me personally and I believe to the residents of Langland County. Uh, we have a very active timber sale program um, selling about 3,000 acres a year in stumpage, um, administering between 40 and 50 timber sale contracts each year, and we return revenue of over a million dollars back to the county um, through timber sale revenue after our cost. So it's, it's a pretty important uh, money maker uh, to help keep taxes lower for county residents. Um, we have two, two of the main timber types we have on the county forest are, is Aspen, uh, even age management of uh, 44,000 acres and then our hardwood timber type of 43,000 acres. So we're, we're split up quite nicely um, in a, in, in, with invasive species, particularly garlic mustard, our large concern is in our hardwood type. Um, so why are we concerned, I guess, because um, invasives threaten forest health, productivity, and diversity. Um, that has negative impacts on our timber sales and which in turn means less revenue. What I mean by that is garlic mustard particularly um, that likes soil disturbance. Uh, so when we have areas of uh, timber stands that have 
a large presence of garlic mustard, we need to seasonally restrict them, which is a hardship on our loggers, because they already have enough uh, winter work generally, and that in return, we get lower stumpage values for those for those sales. So uh, we're really trying to battle this to, to uh, uh, work with our logging contractors uh, to uh, reduce the spread and work around, other than seasonally restricting, we re really are trying to find ways to um, maybe prevent prevent the spread of uh, garlic mustard, particularly on, on county lands. Um, invasives, negative impacts to recreation. Uh, we have a very large recreation program here as well. Uh, 551 miles of snowmobile trail that uh, go through county, private lands, and 106 miles of ATV trails. We have the Ice Age Trail was here today uh, from one end of the county to the other. Uh, horse trail, sled dog, uh, hiking, mountain biking, you name it, hunter walking trails, we have all kinds of things so that we offer. Uh, these invasives really threaten some of those opportunities. Um, garlic mustard or hunter, on our hunter walking trails would be, would be devastating if, if we had a terrible infestation there. So we're really trying hard to, to uh, limit that, limit those opportunities for introduction on our hunter walking trails. Um, well, parsnip is something else we're dealing with. At our trailheads, our, our rec recreational areas, you know, that is a, a species that when the skin is contacted with, with the sap of that plant and exposed to sunlight, it provides severe burns and blisters. So uh, we don't really want to be putting people in those situations if they're not educated or what that plant is. We're putting some signage out there in areas uh, that we have it and we're controlling it. So. Um, I mentioned wildlife being uh, the habitat, less diverse forest means decreased wildlife habitat. Um, so that's something we integrate heavily in our timber sale design uh, with wildlife in mind. Um, again, uh, with invasives, their nature is to take over the, the uh, take over native plants and we're concerned with regeneration. If we're harvesting our hardwood in our, our north, northern hardwood timber site and we can't regenerate it, that's not sustainable. So that's something we're really concerned about and hitting really hard. Uh, a lot of inventory work, going out surveying roads, our stands of timber that we'll, we will be selling and um, mapping that. Uh, there's a lot of, of coordinated effort between my office, DNR, to spray, uh, pull, map, and, and make people aware of where we have these issues and, and plan accordingly. Um, communication I found is so important with this because if we know it's there and maybe say a snowmobile club doesn't know it's there or an ATV club and they're doing maintenance on a specific trail, um, that's all, everything we've done is undone because depending on the time of year that seed can be spread so rapidly and um, once it's, we, we've been finding once it gets on the roads, it's introduced on the roads or trails, it's very easy to spread it into the woods and the backside of that, it's very difficult to control that once it gets into the woods. We can't, we can't get a handle on it um, as fast as we would like to, given the staff levels we have. So, um, planning. I mentioned uh, uh, with our timber sales, we entered. We that's a, a major, major point of emphasis when we're setting up and selling timber sales is invasives. So our loggers know we we request uh, that all equipment is clean when they come in. And also, we spray them off when they leave. If we know they're in an area that, they, that there's been some sort of invasive, um, be it uh, buckthorn, garlic mustard, wild parsnip, so and honeysuckle. We're seeing some of that, but not, not a lot of honeysuckle, fortunately. Um, we implemented a garlic mustard uh, control policy on a county forest here a few, a few years ago. Uh, that's been somewhat controversial in some respects. A lot of that has to do with roads maintaining our roads and closing some of our roads to uh, motorized vehicles because of how quickly that can spread from one area to the county to another or maybe the neighbor's property. So uh, something we're very, very aware of. Um, we're uh, seasonally restricting some sales where appropriate and, and modifying timber sales. Uh, again, I mentioned cleaning equipment before and after leaving the sale. Uh, signage, we're trying to do a better job with that at our, at our trailhead locations, uh, ATV, um, some Ice Age trail locations. Um, working with our clubs to know what, what to be looking for and, and they've been gracious and, and been very well at, at, um, communicating with us. So education, opportunities like today is a great thing for us to be able to get out and speak of the importance. Um, you know, this is, we're pretty early on in this the way I look at it. Um, we've, the county forest we've been dealing with for about 10 years 
but really it's really ramped up in the last five. Um, I don't know if it's uh, a, we've been talking in, in the office, if it's, a, if it's a product of the good growing season we've had, um, enough water that this garlic mustard particularly has just taken off. So in uh, 2016, we treated over uh, 600 acres of garlic mustard alone. Uh, 2017, we treated over 1,000, and we're on pace to do that this year too. So um, that doesn't mean every you know 1,000 acres has it all. We're trying to get to these things um, two times, once in the spring, pull or spray them, uh, these, these populations, and then circle back in the fall and see if we missed anything or get ahead of it for the following spring by uh, spraying again. So uh, it's very labor intensive. Uh, budgetarily, it's, it's costing, you know, it's costing the county some money, uh, probably a tune of about $50,000 a year, um, just direct spending. And then, uh, you know, when you factor in the seasonal restrictions on timber sales, I don't have a number for that because um, that, that's hard to figure. But um, it is a, a big problem we have on a forest. And being that uh, our forest is so well used and utilized between timber and recreation, um, it, it's tough to stay ahead of, but I think uh, our staff is doing a good job with the assistance of DNR um, and uh, uh, TIP, uh, Timberland Invasives Partnership here locally. We're in that uh, in that group, uh, in that, in that um, three county area, I believe. So we've relied on them as well. So um, with that, I guess I can turn it over to Scott. I, again, I appreciate the opportunity to be here. Um, uh, I think it's something by the attendance, looks like everybody's very interested in. So we look forward to some good questions.